You mean it's, a, it's art hard? Yeah, is art hard? Is art hard? Sure is this week. <laughs> you want to tell me about that? Here's I'll frame it for you. For other people, we're taking a moment to like be open and honest about what's difficult. Is art hard? Is art hard? Art's not hard. Art's an idea. Now, here comes the music. <laughs> no, art isn't hard. People might be a little slow to figure that out, but you do what you love, you make it up, you have a good time. All right? I don't know. <laughs> if it's not hard, it's not art. You need to suffer for it. We're suffering here. Boom. The peak past the perfect facade. I know what's hard. I know it's hard. Here's what's hard for me. Somebody came through with a hammer, literally a hammer and paint, and just desecrated everything in. There was paper, glass, you know, things just flying out on the playa, and I had to bring all of my kids and scrape up all of our hard work and put it into buckets and put it in our truck. It's a big surprise to us that we that we done it because we have no planning at all. So we have we, we, we was in a such big hurry that we can't plan anything. We just do what we can do in the second and we can't think about anything else. But we can right now. Yes, and we are very happy about it. Yeah, I guess don't be afraid to fail because that's part of it. We're here because dead homies are real. The, the crossroad of the real world of Burning Man and some imaginary imaginary imagining the future mm -hmm. where Burning Man go over the trash pans and like burn man everywhere and there is a city where people live there. We are here at Burning Man and we are here also, it's uh, this wonderful city where we want, we all want to live. The people who live there found a way how to connect the robot idea of technology and some magic of unicorns, and all this stuff can live together in one peaceful place. So, on the subject of art is hard, these guys built an entire intersection, had it shipped here, it got stuck in customs, so they built an entire new intersection out of what they could and put it together here. Uh, we found a special place, we can make the traffic lights, and we prepared this some kind of bus stop. Not exactly this one, but very similar to this. And we have this three, four, five, maybe five months of the very careful preparation, then we put everything in the one big container and we send it to the United States. Unfortunately, the container didn't come in time, so maybe one week more we will see it in Los Angeles. But, so we figured out two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and we have a choice what to do, to do nothing, said I'm sorry guys, we can't build our art or we have another opportunity to do it again like not in a half year but just in two weeks and we did it so basically you you came up with the idea you built an entire intersection yeah. you that intersection all those pieces will show up in one week which is when nobody needs them and so you built it all again yeah we built it again uh, some stuff we built in Moscow, like these traffic lights, and put it in the, our suitcase, uh, our luggage, and <laughs> take it here, <laughs> like a lot of luggage. And our friends who live in San Francisco, he built this uh, bus stop just from the scratch. And uh, yeah, and it's uh, how to say, it's a big surprise to us that we that we done it because we have no planning at all. So we have, we, we, we was in a such big hurry that we can't plan anything. We just do what we can do in the second and we can't think <laughs> about anything else. But we have right now, yes. And we are very happy about it. Hi, I'm Kaylin and this is Robio and Julia. This is inspired by Heartbreak. I kind of wanted to, it tells the story of Romeo and Juliet but through these robot characters. And what I really kind of wanted to express to people, like the message behind the piece, is that 
that I think we give a lot of ourselves in romantic relationships. We give a lot of ourselves in a lot of, oh, I mean, a lot of different capacities. And sometimes it's too late when you see how far you've, you've gone and how much you've given up and things you're sacrificing and whatnot. And so, you know, I made this thing out of heartbreak and how I wanted people to connect about how we have this kindred experience. And then when it broke, I mean, it was like all of that healing was just nothing. And but seeing it right now and everyone helping me, this is really awesome. Rotate it. Hold on. I. I don't. I. I'm gonna cry if I talk about it. <laughs> Wow, the feeling is like putting so much of your heart into something and then you watch it just like disintegrate in front of your eyes and I mean I wanted people to talk to me about this and interact with me but I wanted to build off of this and when it was done you know it was done and its life was done and what it could potentially do was done and that was really hard. Damn, I can't believe it's back up. <laughs> if you're gonna make art at Burning Man be prepared for a lot of sleepless nights. Be prepared to give about 10 times more time than you estimated for your project. And yeah, I guess don't be afraid to fail because that's part of it. Hey look, it's Adeline Callahan with her piece, Eight. You want to tell us a little bit about your piece? Um, our piece is a time travel train station. Uh, good luck getting a ticket from the monster in the booth. He's a asshole. Can I say asshole? Yeah. Great, he's an asshole. You're asking about struggles, I guess, and I always, I try to be positive about everything. Um, we all do. Here's, I'll frame it for you. For other people, we're taking a moment to like be open and honest about what's difficult so that when they go to do something and they struggle, that, you know, they get a chance to peek past the perfect facade. I know what's hard. I know it's hard. Here's what's hard for me is figuring out how to get all of my little bits and pieces and display them in a way that is safe for the idiots. I had, you know, everything was pretty exposed last year. It was very simple, but about Thursday, somebody came through with a hammer, literally a hammer and paint and just desecrated everything in it. There was paper, glass, you know, things just flying out on the playa and I had to bring all of my kids and scrape up all of our hard work and put it into buckets and put it in our truck and this year I struggled with the fact that I want people to come in and have like an organic experience to you know like walk into somebody's house when they're not home and be able to dig through their stuff but now I have to figure out how I can present that to the responsible burners but keep it protected behind quarter inch acrylic panels at the same time so that that was really hard. I want I want everybody to be able to touch everything and feel everything and, and you know dig around and now I have to protect it from the idiots. That was tough. Okay, she's gonna go. Is art hard? Here. Is art hard? Yeah. Um, some of it. Some of it's easy. Cleaning up after your art is hard. Who are you and what do you do? I'm Sprocket and I make big art. And I help other people make big art. Is art hard? Art is really hard. Art is like one of the hardest things. Rasmus says it's easy. Hmm. And then you're just doing it wrong until you figure out it's easy. I think if you, I think if art is easy, then you're doing it wrong. I think you're not going big enough. I think you should be at, at the terror show point where you are like, you feel like you ruined your life. Like you fucking ruined everybody's life around you and this was a mistake. And then you push past that fear 
and then you just keep going and then all of a sudden you like it's the best thing that's ever happened and if you don't have that point where you're like oh god why did i do this and you're waking up in the middle of the night afraid then you didn't you didn't go hard enough but maybe i'm just a crazy person <laughs> that uh yeah i mean this is a pretty large scale installation the piece is called the orb it's one five hundred thousandth scale of the earth it's 105 feet tall and 80 foot in diameter this is a pretty ambitious and large scale installation to put together in one week my name is sam i'm a designer uh, from new york I love art, love to be out here and just like share beautiful things with people and to offer a new perspective on the playa. We had a team of 10 people out here for a week and a half and yeah, it was really hard. Just a bunch of manual labor, crazy conditions, uh, sandstorms. This balloon itself weighs two tons, just the fabric, and we had to pull all of that out, zip it up. Yeah. Art can be hard. It takes a huge amount of people to put something like this together. Uh, the team is absolutely amazing. And we're coming from uh, New York and Copenhagen. Uh, and I don't know, it was just a lot of us out here putting something up. What didn't work so well? The weather, man. <laughs> the wind and the sand. Uh, the conditions out here are really intense. Uh, yeah, again, this putting this balloon together, it's two tons just for the fabric. and. When those sandstorms hit, uh, we had to have 20 people out there just holding it down. Found out that we couldn't use just one crane. It was too heavy. So we had to bring in two separate cranes to lift the structure and pass it back and forth. Uh, while that was happening, uh, wind started to pick up. And we there was a group of, I don't know, the core group of 12 people and then a bunch of amazing people from the playa that came out and had to hold the balloon down with a giant rope. For the love of art to put it up but yeah we we got it up it's it's standing and it's secure and we're gonna blow up the balloon today Yo. skeptical but they got it up. Good job guys. Et maintenant, je crois que nous allons pouvoir vous quitter, auditeurs 
Sonia vous souhaitant une excellente journée à tous et en vous donnant rendez-vous demain matin avec la séance numéro 8. À demain. Oh, hey, look, it's Uncle Buck. Hey. Uncle Buck, you want to talk about temples for a second? We're here because dead homies are real. I'm here because I've always been here. This is what I do. This is who we are. Love leaves a mark, and I build it because we humans, our greatest tool is love. We, it's a choice right now between fear and love, and the more temples that are open, that allow themselves to grow and become itself, and then be filled, and then have the have the vision to let that go, to burn it down. It strikes a chord. I don't know. These people, they've come to the middle of nowhere, no place, no topos, to find something. And that meandering, that trip, that what brings them here, it's very human, we're very nomadic. We've always been travelers and we've always needed a horizon. And the horizon though has usually been external. However, now the, as the planet grows, as we grow, we're finding, I think, that horizon to be very internal. And temples have been part of that for the past 12,000-ish years, ever since that one in Turkey. I forgot the name of that one, but that's, we've been tem building temples for quite some time because there's an aspect, especially when it comes to the nature of our selves, and having to let go of that self.